So in today's video, we're working on suspension links. It's been a lot of work to get to this point and it's, it's satisfying to kind of see everything start to come together. We've got the axle housings pretty well completed, chassis um, for the most part uh, completed. There's still lots of work for the interior and things like that, but I've got the main, the main frame portion done. So it's neat to kind of see everything start to come together. So my last step um, of the major kind of fabrication is working on my suspension links. I've kept my axles pretty much at my wheelbase where I want them, just to know, uh, just to have a reference on where the axles are gonna be as I'm working on this. So the front one, I made this frame 110 inches long, so it just lines up with the axle, so there's nothing, no frame sticking out at, ahead or behind of the axle. It's just nice to have that departure and approach angle. You're not really gonna hit the frame off anything. And it makes it an easy reference for knowing where the wheelbase will be. So what I did is I set the axles front and rear where I want them. Um, this isn't quite full bump yet. This still goes up two more inches, I believe, higher uh, before we get the full bump. So there'll be, there'll be about two inches between the top of the link and, and the frame with the shocks fully compressed. That's what I figure from my measurements. We got these pretty close to where they're gonna go. Um, another thing that's kind of fun to do is I put the, uh, I put the tire on over there on the wheel bearing just to check my clearances. So what I did next is I put all the suspension brackets for the most part where I want them. And I've been checking the four lane calculator along the way just to make sure I'm in the ballpark. So I'll get to that later. Um, so I put the links where I want them, where I think I want them. And the thing about the links is they have to be in far enough that the tire doesn't rub the link when it's steering. So that's what I'm checking before I start welding all these links together. I wanna make sure that the tire isn't going to rub them when it's turning. So right now these links aren't welded up. I've simply cut the tubes and kind of set them in place, the uppers and the lowers. As far as material for the links, what I'm doing is this is two and a quarter inch DOM with an inch and a half center. I've used this in the past for suspension links and it's pretty strong. It will bend, um, that's if you hit it hard enough, a lot of things will bend, but I'm doing one little extra thing this time to make them a little bit stronger. And that's what I'm stuffing them with solid aluminum. And I'll get to that in a minute as well. So these links will be two and a quarter inch DOM stuffed full of aluminum. For the uppers, Got the, one of the uppers right here. Um, these are inch and three quarter, uh, 120 wall DOM. And why I'm using such big uppers, typically you'd only use like inch and a half uppers. That's what's on my other one. But when I ordered all of my heim joints, I just ordered 16 inch and a quarter heim joints. Um, eight left hand and uh, eight right hand thread. These are another material that are going up a lot in price uh, from when I'm building this one from when I built my last one. So I found a good deal from a place called uh, BigShocks.com. They have uh, package deals on these links. Um, these are these are 1.25 inch heim joints and how they measure that is the width of the shank. So these are one inch and a quarter. Um, that's what I use on my other one for all the lowers and for the uppers on my other one I use a one inch shank. And I didn't think about that. I should have thought about that, that basically the threaded insert is going to be bigger um, than the inch and a half that I used on my other one. So that's why I'm using uh, inch and three quarter is just the easiest way to do it. Um, just because I got such a good deal, a package deal on these is the best deal I could find on the internet. Almost everywhere these heim joints are getting really expensive. Um, and adding up. And when you order heim joints, things to consider are the threaded inserts and uh, the nuts, the jam nuts as well, and the misalignment spacers. All of those things add up. So it's something to pay attention to uh, when you're ordering heim joints. So for example, you can find really good deals from China, <laughs> from the Chinese places on heim joints, but they don't have very good information about how wide their misalignment spacers are. Uh, the total width of the mi misalignment spacers inside the uniball. 
For example, when you order brackets, a pretty common width for these are 2.62 inches. That's how I order my alignment spacers so that they're 2.62 inches as well so that it just all fits together and you don't have um, any issues there. So those are things to consider when ordering Heim joints is to make sure that they match um, the misalignment spacers match, match your brackets on the axle. So just a few things to consider, and that's the route that I went. So that's the material I'm using. The size of the uppers are, are a bit overkill. You don't need inch and a quarter heim joints for the uppers. In the past, I even got away with a, a Jeep rock crawler that I had back in the day that only had three quarter inch uh, um, heim joints on the uppers. However, they did wear out pretty quickly. I never broke one, but I was wearing them out pretty quickly. Um, Inch and a quarter, these are huge for the uppers. That, that won't be an issue at all. Um, these are kind of cheaper Heim joints. They're, they're probably, they probably came from China and then somebody just rebranded and sold them, but they're, they're chromoly and uh, they're pretty strong. If you look at the braking strength of them, they're, they're pretty strong. And I haven't seen myself one of these inch and a quarter ones break. You will wear them out. And one thing I do is hit them with a little WD-40 between every trip and it keeps them from squeaking. So anyway, I've, I've gotten pretty long life out of them. Um, just, just regular, just driving around the trails. My other ones I've got two seasons on now and they're still not worn out. Um, I guess I don't go that much, but I, I go a fair amount and they seem to hold up. So that's what I'm using on this one. So what I did right here is my Ram this is a nine inch ram, so the ram travels four and a half inches on each side. So what I did is I just measured, I put this up like this and then measured four and a half inches to see how far this tire is gonna turn right there and to make sure I have clearance from the tire to the link and to the frame. I kept everything in super tight, so I should be okay there. Um, by the time I tighten everything down, I should be, um, that's, that's one thing you always have to watch out for with rear steer, especially when they can turn sharp, is hitting the frame or hitting your links. Those are two very possible things that you have to watch out for. So hopefully we're all good there. Um, I've got my brackets where I want them. Typically a bracket would be mounted way out on the end like this, like, but we move them in pretty far to make sure that they're not hitting right there. So. That's what I did there. I've got my uppers, decent triangulation going to the frame. I went with that mounting location right there because um, it, it just worked, it was the easiest. I had even put in the calculator and things on moving these uppers out farther, which would have been a challenge. And it really didn't change my numbers at all by moving these in, I thought it would. But I'll, I'll kind of cover that later. So I've got all my brackets, they're just tacked in place right now. And I've got my links cut. They're all cut to size. I've got these all cut to size. And what I'm gonna do is start welding all these up. Um, so I'm gonna get the end welded up, this end all welded up and in place. And then I'll start working towards the front. So I purchased all this aluminum so that I could sleeve these uh, DLM lower links with aluminum. And I am using a little bit older piece of aluminum um, DOM for the one side because I accidentally got a piece of aluminum stuck in the new one that I had cut out But I had this older piece sitting here that's straight that I'm going to use for the one side and it's still it's still good enough shape to use but I learned really fast that when these aluminum links when you go and or buy them from a local metal place that um, it, They say they're an inch and a half which they are but the inside of these D DOM links they say they're an inch and a half, but they're a little bit smaller than an inch and a half. So what we had to do is take these aluminum pieces to my friend's shop here in town in Montrose. His shop is called San Juan Fabrication. They do a great job if anybody needs anything done. Um, they also do powder coating. Uh, they're a, a great place to go, but his name's Gabe Wellfelt and he helped. Um, he put all these in his lathe and then machined them all down so that they'll fit inside my links. Um, I also got some longer pieces. <laughs> I've got some longer pieces of aluminum made so that these can go in my rock sliders. But that'll be for a different video. But that's why I got so much of this aluminum sitting here. Um, I've got four for the, I've got two for the rear links and then two for the front links and then two pieces for my rock sliders. So that's why I have all these pieces. 
So that's what I'm going to do to make this DOM a little bit stronger is I'm going to um, stuff it full of aluminum inside of the tubing. Hopefully um, that combined, I, I won't be bending any links in the future, hopefully. <laughs> ready to weld these links up. So this is one of the lower links and I've got both of my hind joints here ready to go and one thing I have to be sure of is that these hind joints are opposite thread so this one when I turn it righty tighty it actually loosens and I put that back in then this one when I turn it right it actually tightens so that way when I turn the link they both um, work opposite of each other. And that way when you adjust it, you can either pull each hind joint in or pull it out just by turning the link. So, um, what I have to do is I've got my link ready to go. I'm going to MIG weld the bottom links. I'm going to use the MIG welder for the bottom links just because they're pretty thick and I just want to be sure it penetrates well. And then I'm going to use my TIG welder for the upper links. And so these are the pieces of aluminum. I had my friend Gabe uh, machine down for me in his lathe. Uh, they're inch and a half pieces of aluminum that just fit really tight inside here. So we had to take, uh, take a little bit off. And what I'm gonna do is put them inside here just to make these that much stronger. And they're, they're a snug fit, but not too, too tight. So we've got that in there. What I'm going to do is take, take these out because I'm not going to weld them with them in there because the nylon would just melt right out of there and I'd, I'd pretty much ruin them. If I pull each of those out and one thing I have to be careful, one thing I always have to think about when welding on these threaded inserts is they're easy to overheat. Um, it's easy to put too much heat into them. so. I just like to get in and get out. I don't like to spend too much time because I have overheated them in the past. It's something I've learned you don't want to do because what happens is once you overheat them, then they don't thread in very smooth. And every time you go to adjust it, you're using like a big wrench or something. And it's, uh, or you have to go in and re-thread them or clean up the threads. So I just try and get in and get out as quick as I can um, and not put too much heat into it. I also have my drilled holes right here, those little plug welds that I fill in and those just kind of help get a little bit further down on the piece uh, just to tie it make everything a little bit stronger. So I'm going to go ahead and start welding these up. I'm going to do all the lower ones first and then I'll go back and TIG weld all the uppers. <laughs> 